In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take a second look at using beat detection in a real-world project. So what I have here is a project I've been given to do a 60-second promo of a missionary to Spain, and I have some music I'd like to use in that process. So if I click on my track and play, you're going to play some music. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to have the uh, visuals come in on the beat of the music. So I did some manual beat detection uh, by uh, right-clicking on here and use beat detection. We have a lesson on that, so you might want to look at that if you, you're up to speed with us. Now the second thing I'd like to do is use some of those beats that I manually detected uh, to accomplish my task. First thing I want to do is I'll take this image of uh, the nation of Spain. I'm going to drag it through for the duration of the clip. I'm not sure how long it's going to be, probably not a minute and a half, but, but we'll let's assume it's just over a minute long. And so the clip will start with the map on the screen. And then as it's going along here, we always have the map and we're going to play. Now on this particular beat, I think I'd like to have something pop in. I think I'd like to have this bar that's connected to the name of the missionaries, Harry and Mary Jones, for our example here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it and drag it, and there's a click to line, there should be, on the second mark. And then what I want to have come in, and that this one will stretch out too, what I'll have come in on the next beat is the name of our couple. And I just drag and drop, and it attaches really nice there. Clings to the uh, blue line, and that gives me an example. So let's see what we have so far, just with three of them. Uh, we'll go back uh, near the beginning of this clip, which isn't the beginning of the segment, because I need to do some editing of, of stuff first. But we'll go ahead and play it. <laughs> Okay, and then we have three beats here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take um, this background and bring that in on this beat. And then I have three of the things I'll be doing that we'll bring on on the next three beats. One there, one here, and one here. Now I just have three texts that complement each other and then I have a background that they're on top of because the lower layers are on top of the layers beneath them, um, above them, I should say. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. <laughs> progress so far. Let's just take a go ahead and take a picture of them and uh, put that in at the next major beat. Uh, sometimes these markers are, have a hard time figuring out where you want to go. So I'm not getting this perfect here. That's annoying. But I'll see if I can eyeball it in this case. Let's see what I have when I click on the marker. I click here, I'm, I'm 38 seconds and 10 frames into the, um, into the uh, project. So I want to be, I can drag there, there, now it found it. So there's a way around it because not every time will it actually stop on the line below the marker. But we'll try one more time with this short segment that we have. <laughs> So you see the process. 
And uh, again, we can stretch all of these out and make them come and go on the music uh, as we want. Uh, but I'm going to give you a, a, a clip of the finished product uh, as we end. But then I'd like to talk to you about some of the things that make this more complicated, but make it better in the next lesson. Because you've noticed I could have all these titles on one slide, or I could be using my Tyler Pro add-on. We're going to talk about how that complicates things, but how it can actually make it better, but a bit harder in the long run. So um, we'll show you more about that in the next lesson.